Hi guys and welcome to the Gone to series. In the earlier tutorials, we talked about introduction to Hibernate. We created a basic Hibernate application using Eclipse ID and went through HBM2 DDL dot auto property in detail. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the most common annotations that we use in a Hibernate application with explanation and demo for each. So let's start. While creating the basic Hibernate application, we learnt about two basic annotations, entity and ID, and also learnt about table annotation. At present, if we run this Hibernate application, Hibernate would create a table with the name student underscore information with the column name, roll number and name. By default, Hibernate considers the model class variables name to generate or interact with the table's columns. What if you want some other name to be considered as the column name in the student underscore information table while performing the database operations? You would use column annotation for doing that. Its usage is same like table annotation. So let's see how it works. Give column annotation to the name variable. Here you give any name of the column that you want Hibernate to consider other than the default variable name. Let's run the program. Check the output. Yes, Hibernate has created the table student underscore information with column names, roll number and full underscore name. So using column annotation, we forced Hibernate to consider full underscore name as the column name and not the name for creating the table and saving a record into it. Before we go further, let's check the data type for all the columns in the student underscore information table, which is created by Hibernate using the student underscore info model class. If you observe the data types here, by default, Hibernate creates the table with nullable columns, except primary key column, which we mentioned using the ID annotation. So when you save the model object into the database, you may not mention the value of a particular column if that is nullable. But what if you specifically want a column to be not nullable, which is desirable in almost all the applications? You would use nullable equal to false in the column annotation. So let's do that. Let's make name as a not nullable column. So now it is mandatory for you to provide the value of this column while saving the student underscore info object into the database. And if you won't, it will throw a not nullable exception for this column. Let's rerun the program. Check the output. Yes, now it has created the name as a not null column in the student underscore information table. There are cases when you would want Hibernate to ignore a particular variable residing in the model class completely while creating the database table or while performing any insert update operations. And for this, you would use the transient annotation. If you mention transient annotation for any column, Hibernate would completely ignore that column while interacting with the database. Let's check it out. Let's give transient to the name field. Run the application. Check the output. Yes, Hibernate has created and inserted a record into the table while ignoring the name field completely. This is another very important annotation that we use in Hibernate for managing the date columns. So let's first create one variable with data type as date. Generate getters and setters for this variable. Give the students birth date here in the main program. Run 
run the program check the output if you observe the results hibernate has created the table with birth date column name and created its SQL data type as date with timestamp. It's the default behavior. If you write date for any variable in Java, then Hibernate would map this Java data type to the date with timestamp in the corresponding column in the database table. What if you want just to store date and not timestamp in your database table? Or maybe you just want timestamp and not date in your database table. And for this, you would use temporal annotation. Let's use that. So temporal is the annotation and inside that, you would need to mention what you want to be considered date, timestamp, times, etc. Let's give it the date, run the program. check the output we can see that now hibernate has created and saved the student underscore info object into the table considering data type for birthday column as date without timestamp in the next tutorial we'll see how to make hibernate generate the primary key automatically for any row insertion in the table